Great afternoon. This is once again we are back on the course. Hallelujah. We are in pursuit of the word and uh, the word could get into us. We have been talking about healing and as I was um, meditating on healing and what came to me as I was listening to different uh, people who are going through uh, difficult times in this world and the conditions. And the law began to, as you know, you're thinking about it, so the law began to say, what more could he have done when he gave his life? And I begin to think about, I says, God gave his only begotten son, only begotten son, into the hands of sinful men to die for us. Thank you, Jesus. What more could he have done? And the price is paid. Thank you, Jesus. Then I thought about, I said, Lord, we are constantly accusing him of not caring. But he said, what more could he have done? He died for us. In this song, it says, um, it says, uh, oh, how he loves you and me. He gave his life. What more could he give? Oh, how he loves you and me. And I'm going to put this song connection here so you can... uh, but just those words of what more could he have given when he gave his life? He laid down his life. And so we're going to, we're talking about healing. And as I was thinking about and contemplating the depths of sin, thank you, Jesus. Do you realize what sin is? Thank you, Jesus. Just the depths of it and the, and the intricate and the woven of sin down to the very fiber of us being. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's why he, his flesh, and he took on flesh. Thank you, Jesus. Because our condition as human beings through the product of sin is the reason we're in the condition we're in. And God says, he gave his life. What more could he have done? And that's what we see now. And that's why we're going to talk right now out of Romans. It says that people... He could heal them, but they refused to come to him. You know, like they was talking about Moses in the wilderness with the serpents. And they said, those who look up, they had been bitten by the serpent, bitten by the serpent. The poison was in them, but they refused to look up. They refused to look up at the brazen serpent. Thank you, Jesus. They refused to look up at the brazen serpent. And I thought about it. I said, what more could he get? What more could he do? Who loves you so much that they would die for you? Become beaten, battered, and bruised for you. Who? What more could he have given? It made me think about Romans, the eighth chapter. And we're going to pray. Father, we thank and praise you for this word. Help us to understand the depths of your love and the depths of the sin that you had to go down to bring us back and to bring life to us. Thank you, Jesus. And to quicken us and to bring us back into your Lord. If we could if we could see the conditions of ourselves, oh God, hallelujah, we could understand the depths of our sin or the sin in mankind, how intricate it is down through generations, down through the fiber, the very the DNA. My God, in the name of Jesus, it was through your blood, your sacrifice on the cross. Thank you and praise you, Lord God. We thank you that you paid the price. Thank you, Jesus. Help us to see and understand the depths of your love in Jesus' name. Romans, the eighth chapter, beginning at the 18th verse. And then we're going to close out because I'm still studying, talking about healing. It says, well, you begin the whole chapter of Romans, the eighth. "There There is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ. Condemnation. You just look up the word condemn. Condemned, condemned to death, condemned to suffering, condemned to affliction. Thank you, Jesus. There is no condemnation to them which are in Christ. You can't get in Christ except you be born again of the water and the spirit. The three that bear witness in heaven is God the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. On the earth, the three that testify the three that agree is the 
spirit, the water, and the blood. So in order for us to enter into this new life, you have to be born again. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ has made me free from the law, the law condemned, the law of sin and death. Condemned. Thank you, Jesus. All of mankind was condemned to the law of sin and death. Condemned. Now, I'm going to skip down. But he goes into verse 18. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be, shall be. Thank you, Jesus. Shall be revealed. Hallelujah. For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, by, by reason of him who had the subjected the same in hope. We're going on down. Thank you. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain. Everybody shot in pain together until now. Because of the condemnation that was passed down through look in Genesis. The the even the planet, even the earthly planet is under condemnation because of the first sin. And it's been redeemed and make a new heaven and a new earth and a new creation. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain until now. And not only they, but we ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, the redemption, redemption, redeemed, Dambasha, redeemed from the law of sin and death and affliction. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. For we are saved by hope, but a hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man see, why does he yet hope for it? But we, if we hope for that which we see not, then we do we with patience. We're waiting. Likewise, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, also helpeth our infirmities, our, our afflictions, our diseases. Stop our shutter. The healing that came, that the same power that raised up Christ from the dead is now quickening us, bringing us life through the Spirit. For we know not what we ought to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searches the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. This is all a part of being transformed and renewed. It says, for we know that in times, we know that all things work together for the good that, of them that love God to them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did pre, whom he did foreknow, or foreknew, he also predestinated to be conformed, changed into the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he glorified. What shall we say then to these things? If God, thank you, Jesus, who is for us, who can be against him? He that spared not his own, this is the key. He that spared not his own son, what more could he give? Thank you, Jesus. What more? Who spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us? Thank you, Jesus. Delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? He delivered his own son up on the cross. You remember Jesus in the garden. Father, if it's possible, is there any way to redeem these people from this condemnation? From the law of sin and death. Thank you. Let this cup pass. Thank you, Jesus. But it was not possible. So he bore our sins. He carried our sorrows. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. With his stripes, we are healed. We are being transformed. We are being renewed. We receive life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We become new creatures in Christ. 
Thank you, Jesus. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son. As the song said, what more could he give? We say God don't care. Do, do we understand our present condition in these earthly tabernacles? It says condemnation. Okay, sold under uh, sin, sold into uh, sin, purchased. There's nothing about this earthly body that you can wash sin away. It, I don't care how much you dress it up, but we are under the law of sin and death. Therefore, if there there is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ, in Christ, in Christ, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life, the spirit of life is the Holy Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free, free. It's appointed unto man once to die. That means because you are in this body, you're going to die. Made us free from the law of sin and death. But if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new again. I'm talking about, it says, the spirit of God himself uh, helps our infirmities, our afflictions, our, all these things come about as I've been studying about healing. Or every single condition the Lord took me back to Exodus. Every single condition is a part of the curse. Thank you, Jesus. Curse it. Curse it. Curse it. And who going to deliver us from this body of, of death except Jesus Christ? He's the only one. Thank you, Jesus. And that's what he said, that people would not come to him. They wouldn't come to him. Uh, and that was John, the fifth chapter. He said they would not come to him that they might have life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, because there's going to be life in no other but John, the fifth chapter, verses 40, and John, the fifth chapter, verses 24. And then we're going to close out because there is going to be life in no one else except through Christ. You will be under the curse and under the law of sin and death. Now, I don't care how much you wash this flesh, it's dying. Baba Shatta is dying. The fifth chapter, verse 40. And it says, thank you, Jesus. Well, search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. But they are they which do testify of me, and ye will not come to me, Jesus said, that you might have life. You will, he said, when you search the scriptures, which is the word of God, you, you will not come to me, he said, that you might have life. Now we're going back up to John, the fifth chapter, verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation. We just learned about condemnation in, in uh, Romans. But it's passed from death into life by believing the word of God. The word of God, which is Christ. The word of God. Otherwise, you under condemnation, under the law of sin and death. Jesus. But Jesus came that we might have life. God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believeth him should not perish, but have everlasting life we're still talking about healing but if you see the condition of mankind and it's getting very clear before it used to make uh, kind of cover up this scene you can see it was kind of dressed up a little bit that thing is stinking and that thing is ugly thank you jesus sin is ugly it's manifesting itself all over the place okay but it's under condemnation and the only way you're gonna pass from condemnation is to 
except Jesus Christ. Verily I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death into life. God done paid the price. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. There is escaping from this condemnation and the law of sin and death. And believe me, this there's a second death. You think that we are decaying now. There's a second death coming. Thank you, Jesus, to those who do not accept Christ. There's a second death. It's not just dying from your body, but your soul. Thank you, Jesus. Being able to understand what it is to die, your soul to die. It's one thing, the body. But it's another thing. And, it, and I don't know about you because most people now don't want to die. It's like, I don't want to die. I want to live forever. I want to live forever. I want to keep on doing. But you can see, wrinkles is coming and this, this, this flower is fading. Think of like a fading flower and drying up. Okay, I'm 70 something. It's just drying up. And of course, we're doing all we can do with vitamins and water and everything else, but it won't keep it. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, let's pray. Father, we thank and praise you. That there, there is only one escape from this mortal existence. And that is the door, which is Christ Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Help us to enter into the door. Thank you, Jesus. Help us to come in. Thank you and praise you, Lord. Help us to, to, to receive you, Lord God, in the very depths of our souls. Help us to understand that our condition, even down to the very fiber of our beings, God, is under condemnation without life from Christ. Help us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Help us to be a mindful of our condition. Lord God, in so many ways we see death taking a toll on the human race. But we thank you and praise you that you laid down your life. You had the power to lay it down and the power to take it up again. And because you live, we shall live also. If we accept you and ask you to come into our hearts, I pray for those souls who hear this YouTube. Help us to know there's only one escape out of the condemnation and the law of sin and death. And that is Christ Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. My God, I thank and praise you. Have your way this day in us. I pray that the sheep will hear your voice. And there are sheep even now who are awakening to righteousness, who are hearing you, Lord. I thank and praise you that they will enter into your rest and cease from their own labor. In Jesus' name I pray and count it done. Amen. Amen. So this is, we're still studying about healing. And the more I see, I see God talk about, if you understand how bad death is, people think they're dressing up, put perfume on, but you are dying. Death is all on you if you don't have Christ. Death is here, Basha, is in your very being, very fiber of your being. Hallelujah. Without life, without Christ, there is no life. Please push the like button. Pray for me as I continue to pray for you and encourage someone else to come along with the word. In Jesus' name, amen.